a stitch of work for me to do. I can't understand you, replied God. There's plenty of work to be done, only you've got to have more initiative. Why don't you try to lead people into sin? That's your job. Lead people into sin, muttered the devil. Why, Lord, even before I can get a chance to say one blessed word to anyone, he's already gone and sinned. <laughs> Temptations of this world are all around us. As Martin Luther said, saint and sinner at the same time. Saint because of the saving power of Christ and sinner because we don't always do what God wants us to do. We don't love God with our whole heart or our neighbor as ourselves. I don't believe that God brings temptations into our lives, but rather that Temptations are part of living in a world that is not fully redeemed. So all around us are things that would lead us away from believing in God with our whole heart. They would lead us away from loving our neighbor as ourselves. I read a bumper sticker once that said, lead me not into temptation. I can find it all by myself. <laughs> Sometimes we make other things God want. We emphasize making money, having power, being famous. Now those things in and of themselves are not wrong, but when they lead us away from God, they are temptations. There's a story that makes this point rather well, I think. Many years ago, a king had one beautiful daughter. She had many offers of marriage, but she could never make up her mind. A romantic girl, she wanted a man who would love her more than he loved anything else. And finally, she devised a way to test the love of her suitors. An announcement was made and sent throughout the kingdom that on a certain day there would be a race, and the winner of the race would marry the princess. And the race was open to every man in the kingdom, regardless of his position. All that was required was the man had to profess to love the princess more than he loved anything else. And on the chosen day, men, rich and poor, gathered for the race. Each one professed wholehearted love for the princess. And they gathered at the starting line and prepared to run this course of many miles that had been marked for the race. And each man was told that the princess waited at the finish line, and whoever reached her first would take her as his bride. And just before the race was to begin, another announcement. The king, they were reminded, was a wealthy man with treasures gathered from all over the world. And not wanting any man to run in vain, it was announced that the king had liber liberally scattered some of his finest treasures all along the course. And each runner was welcome to take as many as he liked. And the race began. And almost immediately, the runners began to come across great gems, bags of gold and silver. There were necklaces and pendants and jewel-encrusted cups and swords and knives. And one by one, the runners, princes and paupers alike, turned aside to fill their pockets and carry off what treasures they could. Blinded by the immediate promise of wealth, they forgot the princess and all their professions of love. All except one. He pressed on, ignoring what to him were mere trinkets when compared to the incomparable beauty of the princess and the prospect of gaining her hand in marriage. And he crossed the finish line. 
That's the way temptation works. It places things in our path meant to blind our eyes to the kind of life God wants us to live. With God's grace, we can learn to avoid temptation. We can learn to walk away from those things that would be God's in our life. God's grace, we can keep our focus on Him and the love we have for Him. And with God's grace, we can turn to loving our neighbor. We can learn to love others instead of concentrating solely on loving ourselves. Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels. Minister.